Hello, welcome to Chickenlandia and welcome to Bok Talk, your 100% friendly backyard chickens show. That's 100%, not 75%, not 50%, <laughs> a full, full 100% friendly. Um, hello to everybody here that is watching on YouTube and hello to those who are listening to the podcast. I am back, or should I say I am Bach. <laughs> um, if you don't know, I took a month long hiatus. It was awesome. Um, I did a lot of work. I'm working on some projects. I got some feedback from you guys. I did send, a, send out a survey and I got some great feedback from you guys. So I'm really kind of excited about the direction that Chickenlandia is going. Um, and on Wednesday, I'm going to be posting my brand new trailer for Welcome to Chickenlandia. So you can watch it. And then see all the exciting things that we will be doing very soon. Uh, just want to say hi to PG Nano Farm, one of my trusted moderators. Thank you so much for being here. Uh, my garden and the dinosaurs who live there is here. So good to see you. Um, I do want to remind everyone, if you want to submit a question to Bok Talk, you can go to my website, welcome to chickenlandia.com. Go to the contact section. And you, there's a little like drop down menu and you can pick ask a chicken question. And I try to answer as many as I can. I cannot get to all of them. Um, I get a lot of questions. So I have to kind of pace myself. Um, so usually I try to get back to everybody, but sometimes I don't. And I apologize for that. Today, we're actually going to do something a little bit different. And if you are normally on my lives, then you know that something different is going on because I'm in a completely different place. <laughs> um, <laughs> this is actually my husband's shop um, because we lost power at the house today. So um, yeah, I guess I was like, what am I going to do? Am I going to like do it on my phone? But if I did it on my phone, then that probably wouldn't work for the repurposing this as a podcast. <laughs> So my husband was like, oh, you should go to the shop. Um, it is so windy up here right now that we lost power. So that's what's going on at my house. <laughs> that's, so that's different. Um, and also I am going to be opening a very simple but great a chicken first aid kit today. And I get a lot of questions about like, what's in your first aid kit? What's in your first aid kit? The one I'm opening today is very simple. It's a, available to everybody. I'm going to tell you how you can get it. Um, I will say that I did receive this from my favorite chicken. Um, that's a, a company that I work with and it's so cute. I want to show it to you. Can you see that? So um, if you're listening on the podcast, obviously you can't see how cute this is, but it's a little first aid kit. It is white and it's got like a chicken and the first aid symbol. And then it's got a little chicken doctor on it. <laughs> and I love that. It's so cute. <laughs> so we're going to be opening this today. Um, usually what I do is I will ask, I will answer some questions that are submitted through my website and then I'll open it up towards the end of the live recording to answer some questions that are coming in on the chat. I'm going to really try and get to that today too. Um, but instead of, at, you know, since I just get this question so much, I just decided, you know what, let's go over just a simple first aid kit that you can either put together or you can buy in a, in this kit that I'm going to show you today. And I do have a more involved first aid kit that I have right here. Um, but I am going to be opening that one and showing you what's in that in a video that should be coming out within the next month or two. <laughs> 
depending. <laughs> um, and so this is a little bit more involved. It's just got, got some more advanced things in it and some things that I use a lot. I'm a big um, believer in homeopathics. I use them on my family. I use them on my dogs. I use them on my chickens. Uh, I've been using them for 25 years. And our family actually has a licensed homeopath that we work with that I consult with about my chickens a lot. Um, so I do have some homeopathics in this kit and I've also just got some other like uh, natural leaning things in it. Um, but I'm excited to open this little kit today because it's just so easy. Like it's just got everything in it, uh, like all the basic things in it and you just don't even have to think about it. You can just buy it. But if you wanna buy the things separately, you can do that too. I'm gonna show you what they are. Um, so let me just say hi to some people in the chat that have come in. Saffron Moon, thank you so much for being here. Brilliant Creatures is here. Yay, Green Dream Project is here. Yay, thank you for being here. Claudia Reyna and Nicole B. Oh, some of my regulars are here, so great to see you. And there's Henry Bressac. I hope I'm saying your last name right. Thank you so much for being here. Um, all right, so... I'm not at home. I don't have a script. Like usually you probably can't tell, but I do. I usually have a script, but today we're just going to do it. The chicken landia way. We're going to wing it. That's what we're going to do today. <laughs> All right. So without further ado, let's open this medical kit. And um, for those of you that are at home listening to this in the podcast, or out walking and listening to this in your podcast or driving. Um, don't worry, because I'm going to describe everything to you so that you'll know what is in the kit. So um, first, I want to show you this box. It's super handy because it's got little, it's got a handle and you can hang this up in your chicken coop. So that's very handy, or you can hang it in your garage or wherever you want to keep it. Um, so I thought that was handy, and this little box is is pretty neat. It's very sturdy. I actually went through and calculated, uh, you know, the price of everything that's in the kit, and compared it to, you know, if you buy it off of, all off of Amazon, you know separately and it did turn out cheaper the way you know when I did it it turned out cheaper so um there is that you're not going to be spending any extra money buying this in the kit and that includes you know a little box to put it in all right so the first thing that I got out of here is this save a chick probiotic and electrolyte combo pack now if you've been following me for a while then you know that I will say to you, if you ever have a sick chick, the first thing you want to do is bring them inside. I use something called the REST method, which is an acronym, R-E-S-T. The R stands for remove your chicken from the flock. And the E, what do you think that stands for? <laughs> so you didn't know you're going to get quizzed today. <laughs> stands for electrolytes. So electrolytes vitamins and probiotics. And look, this has all of that in it. Um, this is a great thing to use if you have a sick chicken and you just want to give them a little boost. You know, when you were a kid, probably when you got sick, your mom gave you like Gatorade or Pedialyte or something like that. And um, that's because you, when you're sick, you don't feel like drinking anything and you can get dehydrated and the same for chickens. Um, and then also just for them to get that vitamin boost and we know that probiotics is are very good. You know, gut health is good for your immune system. Um, that's all very important. So that's a great thing to have on hand all the time. Electrolytes, probiotics, and vitamins. And, and you can get them all together in this combo pack. Um, there's also in the REST method, S, which means scrambled egg, which I would suggest, depending on what's going on, for you to give your chicken some scrambled egg just to give them a little boost of protein if they're sick. And then the T stands for temperature control. And that just means that 
you know, if the temperature is extreme outside, you don't want them to have to be working on trying to regulate their body temperature. And that's why you bring them inside and you put them in, you know, a nice cool place if it's hot outside or a warm place if it's cold outside. And then they don't have to do anything but focus on getting better. So there's that. Um, that is my rest method, S-T. So easy to remember. It comes with a mask. <laughs> you can use it when you're dealing with your chickens or you can take it and go to the grocery store. Um, and then this is very handy, guys. This is a syringe and it's an irrigation syringe. Um, and the reason why it's so handy and for those of you that are listening, it's a, it's just a very large syringe. It's um, not like a, you know, like a needless uh, drinking syringe, like one you would use to give them liquid in, but it's something that you, you would use to clean out a wound. Um, it's from a company called Dynarex and it is called a piston irrigation syringe. Um, obvious. This is, Obviously, this is great. Um, if your chicken is wounded, the first thing that you want to do is clean that wound. So um, it's great to have something like this. You can also get some saline or some sterilized water and keep that inside or near your first aid kit. Put that in your syringe and clean the wound that way. What do we got here? Pick no more cover up lotion. This is by Rooster Booster and it's a little uh, brown bottle and it has uh, tea tree oil, just a tiny bit of tea tree oil because I do want to say this, you never want to put tea tree oil straight on your animals. If you're using a product with tea tree oil in it, it is very likely that it has very little tea tree oil in it um, because it can be toxic at a certain level and also it can be caustic if you put it directly on your skin undiluted um, or, or on your chicken skin and this also has calendula and aloe vera, aloe vera gel um, and it is for reducing cannibalism in your chickens so if you have a chicken that is getting their feathers picked out by another chicken or chickens, or they have an injury that is, you know, that keeps getting exasperated because the chickens are picking at them, then you can use this and put it on there. Um, and that will deter the other chickens from picking on your chicken that is vulnerable. But definitely the best thing to do would be to remove that chicken from your flock. It's got a little bit of medical tape in it. And this Veteracin Plus. This is a really popular product. It's a, a nice little bottle, little white and blue bottle. Antimicrobial -microbi wound and skin care. And this is for a range of animals. Um, and it's, it's popular for a reason. It's really gentle. It doesn't hurt them if you put it on them. And it's going to help to make sure that the bacteria stays out of any wounds um, so that they can heal and not get infection. So this is a really good thing to have on hand. And you just can spray it on the wound. There is some vet wrap in the box and that's for you know if you have a chicken that has maybe it's limping or you see it has a sprain you can wrap up their leg um, and then also it's really good if you have a chicken that has bumblefoot um, you know a lot of people talk about bumblefoot surgery and that that's that's the only way to deal with bumblefoot but um, I am not a proponent of doing bumblefoot surgery at home Bumblefoot is a staph infection. Um, you can introduce more infection into the wound, and you can also um, actually introduce infection to yourself. So we don't want that. I think in most cases, it's best to either seek veterinary care or um, treat it in a different way. And I will just tell you 
really quickly what that is um, or what I would suggest. One thing I don't have here right now is Epsom salts. So if I had a chicken with bumblefoot, what I would do is give it a nice warm Epsom salt bath, put their, put their feet in the bath. You don't have to put their whole body in the bath, <laughs> just the, unless they're dirty. <laughs> uh, just the, the it. And then there is a product that I use and recommend. It is called Prid, and it's a homeopathic uh, drawing salve. And you would slather that over the area where the bumblefoot is and then just wrap it up, wrap it up so that they can't get to it so that it stays clean. And you're going to want to do that for probably a couple weeks uh, nightly. And what will happen is it will hopefully push, you know, pull that infection out and you should be able to just, you know, it should just come out very easily. Um, or on its own. Um, and, you know, most, uh, most of the feedback I get is that the plug just kind of comes out and then they can just kind of like, you know, uh, what do you call it? Just flick it off. <laughs> um, so, or it just comes out on its own and you don't have to do anything. So that is what I would recommend, at least trying that first before you get out your scalpel. And, and, you know, put on your scrubs. <laughs> All right. Uh, hen healer ointment. This is also um, a really good thing that you can put on cuts, sores. If they have dry skin, if, they're, if their comb is really dry, um, you could probably also use it for scaly leg, my, I would imagine. I'm just going to open this to see what color it is. Let's see. And it's blue. And it smells good. <laughs> it smells pepperminty. It smells like toothpaste, but we don't want to use it as toothpaste because it doesn't taste like toothpaste. Um, and, hen and chickens don't brush their teeth. So there's that. <laughs> so chapping and dry skin, minor cuts and sores. A great ointment to have. Some disposable gloves. Again, you can use these in your kit or you can go to the grocery store and put them on because that's what we're doing these days. <laughs> uh, Vet RX, a very popular product. Um, you know, I don't have Vet RX in my in my uh, kit that I that I've had. The reason that I don't is because I keep some essential oils in the kit, and this is that's basically like. Um, I'm going to look at the ingredients real quick while I have it. Yes, this, uh, this has camphor or um, oregano oil, rosemary, um, and it's got a little bit of alcohol. So um, I actually don't use essential oils topically on my chickens, but this is very diluted. So I would feel comfortable using this product. We know that it's been used a lot by a lot of people. It's very popular. And I have not heard of any chickens having any kind of irritation or problems from this. Now, this isn't something that is, is curative. I, I know that a lot of people are like, oh, your chickens have a respiratory issue. Just give them some VetRx, which is not bad advice um, because this is a great supportive product. Um, but really what it would do is it helps just like Vicks Vapor Rub. Um, you know, if you're sick and you're just completely congested, it can really bring you a lot of comfort. It can clear your sinuses. And just having that relief can definitely help you to fight off whatever bug that you've got going on. Um, but it's not like, you know, it doesn't work like an antibiotic would work. Um I know that it does say to put it in their water, but I just don't, I've never felt comfortable doing that. Um, but I will put it under their wings because, and, and I'll put a little bit on their face, but if you, even if you just put it under their wings, they're going to preen, preen themselves and they'll get it all over their face. <laughs> so that is Vet RX for those listening on the podcast. This is a little, uh, yellow and orange box. It is very popular in the chicken community for any kind of respiratory ailment. Um, I do think that it can be used, and I don't quote me on this because I probably need to open it. 
Um, I do think that this is something that can be used for eye worm, um, but I'm not positive. And I will, I'm going to look, I'm going to look when this is over and then I'll put that in the show notes. <laughs> I could be just, you know, thinking uh, something else. There is that. You can also put it, you know, I, I have battled scaly leg mite in my flock. Oh my gosh. It is a, a scaly leg mite is my nemesis. <laughs> it's my kryptonite. Um, I really don't like it, but it is very, very common. And certainly if you rescue chickens, you have likely dealt with it. So I, I rescue chickens. And because of that, I do understand that there are going to be more risks involved because I'm bringing chickens in from other areas. And even with all the quarantining in the world, stuff gets through. And, you know, I think that there's kind of this misconception that, oh, you know, if you quarantine, you'll be totally fine. Well, that's actually not true. Um, because many, many chickens, every, every flock really has immunity to its own set of pathogens and they carry those pathogens around. So it, that chicken may not show any symptoms because it has immunity to those pa these pathogens that it, it has been, it's developed immunity to over time in its own flock. Well, when you take that chicken and you introduce it to a new flock, it's carrying these pathogens that you could keep it in quarantine for two weeks and it's never going to show any symptoms. And then when you put it into your flock, the flock is not used to that. So a, a really common one is coccidiosis because coccidiosis is everywhere. It's everywhere. It's in the soil everywhere. And it is a normal part and a necessary part, believe it or not, um, to, you know, to our ecosystem, to our environment, but there's different strains. So if you bring a flock, a, a chicken from another flock that is carrying coccidia, but it's, is immune to the coccidia that is present in, in its environment and it comes into your flock, then there's a chance that, uh, you know, there could be a coccidia, a coccidiosis infection happening. Um, you know, and even like with Marix, people are like, oh, well, you know, my chickens are vaccinated for Marix. Well, the vaccine does not uh, prevent infection. And Marix is also everywhere. I hate to tell you guys this, but it's true. <laughs> It's everywhere. There's many different strains. Some are very virulent and some, some aren't. Um, lots of chickens have immunity to different strains. So, but since the vaccine um, does not prevent infection, it prevents the symptoms and it decreases mortality, which is good. Um, but your chickens can be carriers and you won't know it. So then if you bring another chicken in from another flock it, there could be an infection happening. But um, anyway, I'm getting way off topic here. We were, <laughs> we were talking about Merrix earlier on a new group that I'm in. It's called Everything Backyard Chickens. And it's ran by the folks over at My Favorite Chicken. And um, it's a fun new group on Facebook. And, you know, never a dull moment. Uh, this is Backyard Chicken Xyphend A. It's a little bottle, a little uh, white and a little white bottle and clear bottle. And um, it says provides digestive health support, contains essential oils and enzymes. So I need to read a little bit more about our friend Xyphend A. Um, but what I'm guessing is, is that it's to keep their digestive systems healthy so that you're not having to deal with uh, internal parasites. And, you know, when companies make a natural product, they have to be real careful about how they word things. And that's probably why it doesn't say, you know, dewormer on it or, or prevents parasites because they, they have to be real careful about making those claims. Um, 
but it says, you know, let's see, put it in a gallon of fresh water for seven consecutive days, repeat uh, every month throughout the year. So that's what I, that's what I'm thinking. Um, this is, is it, it's, it's something that really helps keep their digestive thing. And if you just, if you want to know the ingredients, let me look and see. I, oh gosh, people, I can't see. <laughs> I, I turn I turn 46 on the 27th just so y'all you guys know <laughs> for those listening on the podcast I just took my glasses glasses off because I can't see a dang thing and the, the lettering on this is tiny and I need you know I need a, a magnifying glass that's what it's come to liquid yucca I cannot read that word extract <laughs> oh it's got it look it's got um because it's got probiotics in it, got uh, lemon essential oil, grapefruit essential oil, fennel, and anise. Yeah. Yep. That sounds like it's like a digestive toner to keep those bugs away. Let me put my glasses back on. <laughs> All right. We're almost done here. And then I'm going to say hi to everybody who came in. Here is uh, some tweezers. You know, this is these are handy uh, for various reasons. There is a some little scissors. You know that we need those to cut the 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 vet wrap and and gauze. So I think that is a great little kit. Oh, there's one more thing. This is important. Quick stop uh, quick stop powder. Um, and what this does is helps to stop bleeding. Now, if you have a chicken that has torn its toenail off, it bleeds. And if you have a chicken that has, for whatever reason, got a wound on its comb, you will be freaking out because it bleeds so much. Um, so it is so handy to have this type of powder um, some people will use cornstarch as well, um, but that's, you know, this probably actually has cornstarch in it. Well, maybe not. Um, but yeah, this will stop the bleeding and it's super handy to have. So that is it. That is all the stuff in the kit. And if you hold on just a second, I will show you the kit again. For those of you listening on the podcast... It is a cute little first aid kit that is in a white, uh, a, a little white carry-on container and you can hang it up in your coop or wherever you want. And it has a little picture of a chicken doctor on it so that it can remind us what it is. <laughs> All right, guys. So I am going to go through and say hello to everybody in the chat. Looks like the Barnyard Chicken is here. Thank you so much for being here. Getting Started on Homesteading is here. Thank you so much for being here. <laughs> I don't know what. Oh, Bubba. <laughs> Bubs from Getting Started on Homesteading. He's very silly. Uh, let's see. Brilliant Creature says, I'm watching this with a chicken on my lap. I approve of that. I think that, um, you know, it's great to expose your chickens to Chickenlandia entertainment. <laughs> All right, guys, I am going to open up the chat for some questions. If you guys have a question, please ask. And if I know the answer, I'll answer it. And if I don't know the answer, I'll find out and I'll get back to you. <laughs> Oh, uh, so Don Joe 706 said, hello, I came in late. Are you selling the kit? So um, thank you so much for saying that because you totally reminded me what, did I, what I needed to say. The kit was sent to me from my favorite chicken. Um, and I did tell them, look, I, you know, you can send it to me and I'm going to open it and I'm going to show my fans what it's all about. Uh, it is $85 if you buy it from the My Favorite Chicken website. Now, I will tell you that 
before I got on this live today, I went and I added up all the things. I went on Amazon and I just added up all the things individually. And it did come out actually more than what, uh, than $85. So I think this is, is a good deal. Um, and it just is like, it just takes all the guesswork out of it. You just buy it. It's all there. It's in a neat case and you can hang it up on, you know, wherever you want and it's all there for you. Um, and then I did mention earlier that soon there will be a video and likely a blog that goes along with it where I'll be opening my other kit. This is the kit that, that I put together and that has just a little bit more, um, natural things in it. It's got almost the same stuff and then an, ad some additional things that I use. So that will be coming soon. All right. I see we are getting some questions. And if you have a question, um, the best way to get your question answered is to submit it to uh, my website, which is welcome to chickenlandia.com. And you can go to the contact section and then go, there's a, there's a little drop down menu and it says, ask a chicken question and you can send it in there and submit it to be answered here. Um, today, I didn't do it, but usually what I do is I answer those submitted questions. And then I try to go into the chat and answer a few questions if I can get to them. So I see that I have some coming in now. One is from Brilliant Creatures. And they asked, is it different treating scaly leg on chickens with feathered feet than without? Well, yes, because they get so dirty. I mean, they <laughs> get so dirty. Um, I just treated my flock and I am not even taking, if you go on my Facebook right now, there aren't any recent pictures of my flock <laughs> because if I'm posting them, they're from before they got treated because they're so dirty. Um, in my opinion, the easiest way to treat your chickens for scaly leg mite is just to fill a, a bowl deep with some uh, vegetable oil and then take, especially if you have a large flock, this is what I have to do because I've got 19 chickens. Um, you just take each one, dip their feet in the oil and they just, their, their legs and feet get immersed in the oil and then do that every few days. And a, a great thing that you could do, and I already put it away, is you could put um, some drops of the VetRx in that oil as well. Um, and to me, that's the easiest way. Another thing that you can do is just slather their legs with Vaseline. Um, and for a feathered uh, breed, a, a breed with feathered feet, you just want to get that oil all over those foot feathers because you want to make sure that those mites get smothered. Um, scaly leg is easy to treat, but sometimes you won't see their scales unless you rub them off, which I don't recommend because you can introduce infection that way. And some people will tell you, oh, you need to scrub the legs and get the, get the dead scales off. I would not do that. Um, it just basically, you know, you would do it if you were concerned about the way that they look, but it doesn't bother them once the mites are dead. But it, it will probably be unsightly until they go through their next molt. Um, and then yeah, you should see the legs smooth out again. Sometimes they never do, even if they don't have the scaly leg mite. So um, I hope I answered your question, brilliant creatures. PG Nano Farm asks, how... <laughs> we were just talking about this. How long do I have to drive my hen around to break her broodiness? So I have a... A thing that I do when I have a broody hen and um, they've just been broody for too long. They're really just not doing great, especially if they've been broody for longer than they would normally be if they had baby chicks. And we don't really do a lot of baby chicks in Chickenlandia since I focus on rescue. Um, so my trick is to take them for a car ride. And usually what that does is they're like, oh my gosh, I've been abducted by aliens <laughs> and it's not a good time for me to raise babies. So I'm not going to be broody anymore. Um, sometimes it works. Sometimes it doesn't. I have found that a fairly long ride, like a 45 minute ride, and you might have to do it more than once. And the, the two times that I've done it where I, where I did that, I took them on a long ride twice it broke their broodiness and they even went back. I have a video about it and my chicken sack, her name is sack 
because my four-year-old named her. <laughs> he was four at the time. He's six now. Um, she went right. When I got home the second time, she went right into the nesting box again. I was like, oh, my gosh. You know, what? But that night, she came out, and then she, she wasn't broody anymore. So I was like, oh, okay. And it also worked for my other chicken that I did it on. So. It's not, it's not scientific. I don't have, <laughs> you know, it's not lar a large enough group to say that, that, you know, it's a hundred percent foolproof, but it has worked for me. So if you have a question, you can ask it in the uh, chat and make sure that you put it in all capital letters so that I can see it. I have time to take maybe one or two more questions. So Feel free to ask. Making lemonade from lemons is here. We are doing well. I am in, I am at my husband's shop because we have no electricity at our house. <laughs> it is very, very uh, windy here and we lost our electricity. PG Nano Farm says, I will be driving all day tomorrow. <laughs> yep. Yep. It'll be worth it. It'll be a fun drive. You'll have chickens with you. Just don't let them drive. Uh, Brilliant Creature says, thank you. I think we might have scaly leg mite in the flock, but I don't know if I'm just being paranoid. Um, you will see a, it's, it's pretty obvious when they have it, um, their scales will get pushed up. And what happens is the mites get into the scales and then the scales get pushed up. And if it's allowed to go for a long time without being treated, their feet can get deformed from it. Usually they, they wouldn't die from it. If that happened, that would be a very awful, awful scenario. Um, but they could be very uncomfortable and they could be permanently deformed from it if they had it for a long time. Like I said, I have dealt with it a lot. It's a real pain um, and it's unsightly, but in general, it, you know, it's just one of those things that sometimes happens when you have flocks and especially if you have a mixed flock where you're bringing in chickens from other places. Um, one thing I do recommend for everybody is when you bring in a chicken, Make sure that you treat that chicken for mites, you know, if, and I don't use chemicals. Okay. Um, and I am going to be talking my, I think, uh, not next week, but the following week, the video will either be about feather loss or it will be about mites, uh, mites and lice. I haven't decided which one's coming first. <laughs> um, so you should check that out. I'll be talking, talking about that. And I just absolutely just lost my train of thought. <laughs> anyway, guys, I'm not getting any more questions in. So it we have been on for about 40 minutes. And you know, in Chickenlandia, I like to keep things short and sweet. Hello, Barbara C. from Tucson. Thank you for being here. Um, I thank you so much. Oh, I am getting one more question. <laughs> oh, gosh. <laughs> Bubs, <laughs> so getting on, I don't know, getting started on homesteading says, my rooster is jealous of me. How do I get him to not think that I am prettier than him? I just don't think that there's an answer for that. <laughs> I, just, <laughs> I don't know. Maybe you should dress up like a rooster and... <laughs> see if that helps. <laughs> thank you for your question. Um, guys, thank you so much for being here today. It feels really good to be back. I've got some exciting, exciting things in store for Chickenlandia. I'm really going to be, you know, focusing on getting chickens into every neighborhood in the country and maybe the world. <laughs> We are going to start talking about some fun things, and um, I hope you'll stick around with me. If you're new, make sure to subscribe to my channel, um, and you can also, if you're listening to me on the podcast, I would really appreciate a nice review from you, even if it, you know, if it's not nice, what can I say? <laughs> 
I'll just pretend it's not there. <laughs> um, anyway, guys, thank you so much. If you want to submit your question to Bok Talk, please go to my website. Welcome to chickenlandia.com. Go to the contact section and you'll find a little drop down menu that says ask a chicken question. I can't answer every question, but I'd love to hear from you. So make sure that you do that. And until next time, guys, have a wonderful, wonderful couple weeks. And we'll see you back. We'll see you on Wednesday when my channel, when my channel trailer goes up. And then there'll be another great video for you next week. And then I'll be back live the week after the Monday after next. So I will see you guys then. Have a good one. Bye.